Hello, thanks for joining me. Um, so today I'm going to be painting on the snow leopard painting behind me. It's pretty much uh, a little beyond an underpainting stage. I've, I've blocked everything in. It's a little more than blocked in. I've, I'm working on the colors. Uh, they're not completely dialed in yet, but obviously my subject is worked out and the background is starting to fall into place. Um, so what I'm doing now at this stage is basically, um, I, I work in a lot of thin layers and it's a good way to build up subtle um, shading and values and textures that way. And so at this stage, I'm going to start going over everything. Uh, I'll be working on the sky. I'm going to add a lot of, uh, it's going to be a sort of a deep outer space look. There'll be more definition, more depth. The stars will start to come into play. And from there, I'll work downwards uh, into the mountains and then into the foreground eventually. And once I have my background established, then I'll worry about finishing the cat. Um, but I really want the values of the background and the colors of the background to help me uh, decide exactly how to finish the cat. So that's what I'll be working on uh, today. I'm going to change the camera and, and so that you can see more of the painting as I'm working and I'll try to uh, talk along as I'm working and hopefully add some kind of uh, insights for you. So thanks for joining. I hope you enjoy. This is straight Payne's Gray I'm using here in the sky. One of my favorite blues. It's very, very good for uh, if you had white for doing overcast skies and things like that. Soft, pale blue skies. This is. Uh, golden brand fluid acrylics I'm using. If you add a little of the uh, glazing medium, let me see if I can show you what that looks like here. It's this uh, satin glazing liquid by Golden. I don't know if you can see that. Um, very good stuff for doing skies. It slows the drying time a little bit and uh, doesn't lower the viscosity of the paint like water does. Um, makes it spread very well without running too much. I really enjoy it. So as I was saying, I like to paint in a lot of thin layers, and I don't know if you can tell very well from this video, the lighting isn't very good, but one of the benefits of that is that um, the, the paint is transparent, obviously, and so 
everything you've done before is going to show through just a little bit and um, that's often a great way to create a natural looking texture um, obviously my sky I'm not going for a, a perfectly uh, even gradation of sky I want a lot of interest um, to my sky um, even though I'm not intentionally painting or I'm not uh, directly painting clouds here um, that's what they're going to end up looking like because of the way that I'm doing the texture um, and as I get more add more definition and stars and things it'll all come together nicely um, you can do it with thick paint too but this is just the way that I've learned and I prefer it I feel like it's easier to get a more natural look this way. Um, nature is not... Um, it's very random. It's hard to get randomness without literally being a little bit random in the way you paint. Painting is like finding a, a subtle balance between, I don't know, uh, relinquishing control completely to whatever might happen, but yet also relying on thousands and thousands of hours of experience and skill to guide that sort of magical process home. If you're too calculated, you get a stale painting. If you're not calculated enough, you get a big mess. Maybe you're an abstract artist, and that's what you're going for. But even with abstract, there's a, um, there's a method. If you paint with intention, if you can sort of at least visualize the the mood that you're going for before you start painting and sort of start with that as an intention um, your painting will have more meaning and people will be able to tell an abstract painting doesn't have to be um, completely meaningless. So I'm just darkening the sky down to the mountains. And I'm not trying to be too perfect about it. These circles that I've painted in here before, uh, I did those very quickly, uh, sort of as placeholders. I'm not worrying about um, covering them up right now. I will go back and fix those after I establish my sky better. It'd be foolish to try to paint around those. Stormy sky going on here, I guess. It gets towards the mountains a little light and as if there's a the sun is set and the sky is lighter near the horizon. Not always, but generally. My moon here in the middle is more uh, of a symbol than 
something you would really see in reality. I'm not really concerned so much about reality. If you ask me, that's one of the great benefits of being an artist, a painter. Um, it doesn't have to make sense, it just has to look good. It's like what I used to say. Sometimes I'll get a little bit of water on the brush if I want to just do a larger washed area. Washed area. I don't want the paint too thick. You can also take like a, a rag or something sometimes and dab and soften the areas a little bit if you want like that. It's another way to create more texture. Soon it'll be time to start adding stars, I think. Um, there's a few ways you can do stars. I'm not going in with a small brush and painting each one, of course. Um, depends on how many stars you want. Um, you can get paint on a brush and flick it. That whole thing you've probably seen done. or have a spray bottle that kind of splatters the paint. If you want a really dense cluster of stars, I can use that. Um, sometimes a bit of both of those techniques will work and you'll have to mask off certain areas. Maybe this moon and below the horizon and the cat's face would get masked off. To do that, I like to take the board and lay it down on the ground. Uh, it's a little bit easier and it prevents paint from potentially dripping. You don't want a star unless you're doing a shooting star that is just like drips straight down. Too much danger so I like to lay the painting down. And uh, it won't work for this camera angle so I have to do that off camera but I'll explain it afterwards. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera. Um, I'm to the point where I want to start darkening the sky even more. Um, and instead of using black, I'm using a mixture of uh, alizarin crimson and thalo green. Uh, there's probably a little more of the alizarin crimson uh, to create a warm, a warm black. And uh, the lighting, there's, there's too much reflection on this board, but I'm going to work on these, the corners and the top part here, darkening it a little bit more as it comes down towards the horizon line. This is kind of what the color looks like. Uh, you get the idea. As I said before, I was using almost straight Payne's gray to do the sky, and I like the blue that it creates. Um, but as it gets to the top of the painting, I want more of a deep space feel, and I feel like there needs to be more color variation anyway in the sky. Um, I don't want just one solid mass of paint gray. So this will add some subtle variations, and as you're mixing this color, you can experiment with going a little bit more green or a little bit more red, depending on what you're painting. Um, some like if you're painting a, an outdoor scene and you maybe the time of year is autumn or, or summer even and you want warmer shadows uh, sometimes going heavier on the alizarin crimson gives a really interesting shadow effect for the the shadows are warm instead of cool, which is a very common way to paint. Cool shadows, warm highlights, instead you rever you're reversing that. So it'll fade to a little lighter as it comes down, and I'm not trying to be too smooth. 
A lot of this will read as clouds or nebula or whatever. I do use black on occasion, but it's usually mixed in. It's rarely ever um, areas of black that I'm painting. Um, maybe spot areas where you where I really want like a for some reason that's appropriate. But for the most part I don't use black that that often. I feel like these chromatic blacks is is what you call them. Chromatic black means that it's a black with color. And I find them more more effective and more more pleasing to the eye than just a black color. Because I'm painting over blue, of course, I'm painting over an already fairly dark color. Um, this dark chromatic black is supported by the blue even more. If I painted this on white, it would take a few layers to get the depth, that I, the darkness that I want. On the moon, I'm not being real super picky. I'm going to clean that up later. It's easier to blend if you go over the lines a little bit. And I can come back later and make it glow and clean the edges up. again and soften some areas where a clean brush would work too. I don't want any too sharp brush strokes in the sky. made some other videos on my YouTube channel you'll find where I've made a time-lapse painting if you'd like to watch this all sped up. This brush I'm using is a it's like a large filbert. It has a rounded top. It's good. Uh, I could use a much bigger brush for this guy, as a matter of fact, but it's better than a squared brush because it, you get less uh, hard lines for a sky. I use square brushes a lot in, for doing uh, other portions of the landscape, like trees and grass and things like that, but this makes a pretty good uh, softer brush for doing skies. And this is not the final layer still. There'll be a lot more work on the clouds or nebula. Layers and layers and layers. I painted in oils for many, many years. And uh, in the last year and a half or so, maybe less, I've moved almost entirely to acrylic paints, mostly for health reasons. I don't want to work with solvents anymore. But I think those years of oil painting has uh, strongly influenced the way I paint in acrylics. 
I don't know what other acrylic painters how they paint, but they don't paint thick acrylics. Very thin. I get towards the horizon here, I think I want a little more of my Payne's Gray in there, so I'm adding a little bit of blue, a little bit of that Payne's Gray to make it bluer. Less purple looking. Might have went a little too dark there, but I can lighten it up on another pass. Or what, try to wipe some off now. I'm also getting some kind of cool textures in there with the rag that would be hard to get with a brush. Lot it a little bit so it's not so straight lines. Adding more cloud texture, I guess. More atmosphere. It's nice to have a little contrast in the sky. These, uh, these dark shapes are clouds that are more in the foreground, I suppose. Sitting on top of a lighter sky. I have a photo reference that I'm working from, but sometimes I just put that away and look for my imagination. A photo reference is nice when you have to get in there on the cat's face. And you really need to know what a cat looks like if you're going for semi-realism, as I am here. But for atmosphere, skies, and landscapes, sometimes it's fun to just paint from the heart. Look at a photo to be inspired, be reminded what a land, what a Himalayan sort of mountainscape looks like, and then do it on your own, make up your own landscape. It doesn't have to look like anything. You don't want it to. You're the boss. I used to have an art teacher in art school. The art Institute of Seattle. Uh, his favorite saying was, uh, what does look like look like? He would he'd say, I, I don't know. What it, it looks like whatever you want it to look like. What does look like look like? A student would come to him and say, what does a cow look like? Whatever you want. It's your cow. I always like that saying. We have a license to do whatever we want as artists. There are very few rules. For example, I've done a lot of paintings that were started in acrylics, 
thin layers of acrylic. And then I painted on over the top of those layers with oil paint, and that, that works fine if the acrylic is fairly thin, the oil paint doesn't have any problem sticking to it, but if you do the reverse and you start putting acrylics on top of oils, you're not going to have good results, your painting won't last, you will struggle, and it's generally a bad idea, so try it if you want, but if you're making a painting you want to be around for a while, then uh, not advised. So, As I've darkened the sky now, I need to go and pull out a lot more contrast and darkness from the landscape as well, especially these trees. Um, they're very washed out. And some of the lighting on the mountains, these shadows here, will have to be darkened a little bit. Um, I'll probably reach for my paint gray again. A lot of times shadows um, in the environment will, they're reflections of the sky, so you're going to have luck with the same color as a shadow color. This mountain is much closer than these mountains, so this shadow in here will be darker than the ones back here. You can just paint right through these trees. Don't have to paint around them. They're going to get another pass of paint after this, so it'll get touched up. In my darker places, I'm for a shadow. I'm going back to my mix of. Uh, Lizard and crimson and phthalo green. Cause I want those darker in the key places. These are dark rocks poking through the snow in certain places. Get in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Using just the tip of the brush, 
loosely. Just want the impression of sharp little rocks coming through the snow. Not being too careful. Use the shape of the brush to your advantage. Uh, you see there's this little... makes an arced shape because of the shape of the brush. I don't think of myself as a realist painter. I don't paint realism, that is. But maybe something close. Somewhere between impressionistic and realism. So it's comfortable for me. I like it. And then as I get down here into the shadows, Behind the trees, I'm just going to paint over everything at once. Very thin layer of paint. It's kind of got a purple-blue cast to it. It's a much richer shadow color than if I were to use a black, for example. I'm going to do more of that down in here. Not too heavy on the paint here. I want it to fade out a little bit as it gets further in the distance. It's much lighter. So I'm adding a little bit of water to the brush and wiping some of it off on a rag. Very, it's a very light amount of paint I'm using right now. Use your finger on rare occasions, not recommended. Acrylic paint is apparently not as toxic as the solvents and oil paints, um, but still not a good idea to use your hands to paint. We get the most exciting little bits of contrast when anytime there's a light area like this edge where the snow is in full light, just behind it you have a much darker spot that fades off immediately. Um, those little bits are very interesting to the eye and add a lot of micro contrasts throughout the painting. Decided I want to soften this. I think I'm going to go over it with a little paint spray, a very watered down paint spray. I don't want it that. I've got too much paint on the brush, so I'm going to wipe some off. Even more. Just, just fade it out a little bit. It's very easy to paint white back in if I change my mind. But now that I've darkened my sky, I feel like all these elements can be softened a little bit. 
we're looking through, this is in the distance a long ways, and we're looking through a lot of atmosphere. Atmosphere tends to soften everything. The contrast is less. The colors are going to be probably less saturated in general. Lighter. So, I think that's enough for now. You get the idea of this phase of the painting. Um, this won't be the final layer, of course, but... Um, so, let's have a look. See it without as much glare. It's pretty challenging. Um, as you can see, it's very messy at this stage. And who knows how much I'll tighten it up. I might just leave it pretty loose. But anyway, you get the idea. Okay, well, thank you for joining me. Again, my name is Moksha Marquardt, and you can find more of my art on my website. The link is in the profile. I have plenty of uh, other videos here to watch, time-lapse videos and instructionals and things like that. I'll be posting a lot more in the near future. Thank you, and subscribe also if you'd like to uh, support me. I appreciate it. Okay, bye.